This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Devil May Cry is a series renowned for its stylish action. But beyond all the gunslinging, sword slashing, and royal guarding, there is, in fact, a story. So if you're just jumping into DMC for the first time with Devil May Cry 5, here's the entire plot summed up in seven minutes. Sort of. First off, this is Dante. He's, well, if I could channel my inner Ric Flair for a second, he's a red coat wearing, demon form bearing, gun wielding, death dealing, woo, rocket riding, high flying, son of a gun. Actually, he's a son of Sparta, the legendary Dark Knight who, in the war between the human and the demon worlds, went against his own kind to aid the humans. After defeating the Demon King Mundus, Sparta closed the gateway connecting the human world to the demon one using his own blood, a special amulet, and the blood of a human priestess. And for a while, everything was great. Sparta was a benevolent ruler for about two millennia, gained a human form, and fell in love with a woman named Eva. The two had twin boys, Dante and Virgil, who he gave each a half of his special amulet. Sadly, at some point, Sparta dies. And while we still don't know how or why it happened, this is where things start to take a turn. Mundus's demons return to the human world and kill Eva, leaving Sparta's two sons orphaned and alone. Fast forward to the start of Devil May Cry 3, which sees a young Dante just getting started with his as of yet unnamed demon hunting business. He gets approached by a man named Arkham, who leaves him with an invitation. Well, really it's more of a challenge from Virgil to meet him at the top of a tower called the Temin Negru. Dante fights his way through the tower, running into a jester named Jester. Oh, zowie, that was close. And a lady named Lady. <laughs> well, this is my kind of rain. Who's out for revenge against the man who killed her mother? This all culminates with a ton of revelations that all kind of hit at the same time. Arkham is Jester. Lady is actually Mary, Arkham's daughter. And Dante and Virgil are sons of Sparta, but you knew that already. Arkham reveals his scheme, which involved gathering all the keys that Sparta used to lock the gateway to the demon world, open that gateway, and claim the Sword of Sparta, the Force Edge. Turns out, though, that Arkham can't handle that kind of power, and he transforms into this gross purple blob. Anyway, that shape suits you better. Dante and Virgil team up to put Arkham down for good, Lady finishes the job, and then the two brothers have one final battle over who gets to keep Dad's shiny necklace. Dante wins, Virgil gets stuck in the demon world along with his amulet, and Dante finally finds a name for his new shop. Want to know the name? Sometime later, a lady, no, not that one, barges through the doors of Dante's shop with a job. Travel to Malay Island to put a stop to Mundus, who is planning his grand return to power after all these years. Dante makes his way to Malay Island, fights his way through a ton of puppet monsters, this annoyingly resilient fire spider thing, a nightmare named Nightmare, and a mysterious swordsman named Nello Angelo. Nello Angelo, it turns out, is actually Virgil, who after getting stuck in the demon world, picked a fight against Mundus, lost, and became a thrall under his command. After defeating Nello Angelo for the last time, Dante gains the other half of his father's amulet, causing him to finally realize what happened to his long lost brother. Nello Angelo wasn't the only one with a secret though. Turns out Trish was an agent of Mundus all along. She betrays Dante, tries to kill him, fails, almost dies, but is saved by Dante for having a face that looks like his mother. I know, how sweet. So sweet in fact that it causes a change of heart in Trish. And when Dante is about to get killed by Mundus during their confrontation, she sacrifices herself to save him, causing Dante to activate his Christian Bale Batman super serious mode, how much longer are you going to keep zapping? Leading to this wild boss fight, and eventually, Mundus is defeated. In what is one of the most legendary moments of hilarious voice cracking in an otherwise super dramatic scene, I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! light, 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 light. Dante lays Trish to rest with his amulet laid on top of her, and makes his escape from Malay Island. Dante, you are not getting away. But, of course, Mundus comes back for one more round, and is finally put down thanks to the combined effort of Dante and the notably not dead Trish. The two escape on a plane, exchange some nonsensical dialogue. The sky is fair. It'll always be above everyone's head, no different. And the credits roll. Which brings us to... <sighs> Devil May Cry 2. We're gonna move pretty quickly here. Dante meets a lady. No, still not that one. 
Named Lucia, the two go to Dumari Island where they face off against Arius, a businessman who wants to release a powerful demon god named Argosax. Well, well, what have we here? Dante flips a bunch of coins, eventually defeats Arius and Argosax, and Dante rides his motorcycle off into hell. Yeah, let's go all the way to hell. Devil May Cry 4 shines the spotlight on a new character, Nero, who begins the game on the hunt for Dante. After Dante crashes a party put on by the Order of the Sword and kills its leader, Sanctus. The Order is a religious sect that worships Sparta, but we eventually learn that the Order is far more nefarious, with its members undergoing ascension ceremonies that actually turn them into demons. Sanctus is brought back to life thanks to an ascension ceremony, and he winds up orchestrating a plot to activate what's known as the Savior a gigantic statue in the image of Sparta that he plans to use to conquer the world. Is it not beautiful? In order to activate the statue though, they need Sparta's blood, which, as luck would have it, Nero has, for reasons that aren't really explained, but we can speculate that it probably has something to do with his Devilbringer arm, which has some obvious connection with Virgil. Anyways, Sanctus captures Nero, locks him inside the savior, and from there it's up to Dante to retrace Nero's steps, rescue him, and together they bring down Sanctus and the Savior once and for all. From there, we turn our eyes towards Devil May Cry 5. Looks like we still got a long ways to go. Thanks for watching! Obviously, by the very nature of this video, we've glossed over a lot, but hopefully you're all caught up on DMC's lore and ready for DMC 5. If you want more DMC 5, make sure to check out my playthrough of the demo, along with my hopes for what I want to see in the game. And for everything else, give it here on IGN.